Hey everyone, welcome to Wildlife Inspired. I'm your host, Scott Keys, and down here on the bottom, you can find my social media contacts. Today's topic is the difference between wildlife photography and captive life photography, and we'll talk about it right after this. So just quickly to define wildlife photography and captive life photography, I'm going to give you my definition of it. And then I'm going to give you a quick story because like a lot of my videos, there's, there's a, a personal story behind this. And, and sometimes it's what starts me thinking about these topics. Uh, to me, wildlife photography is obviously any wild animal in a natural habitat or natural setting versus captive life photography to me is a, um, a rehab animal, a zoo or a game farm animal. So these are animals that are confined in space, sometimes trained, almost like pets, um, and they're used often for photographic opportunities. So these are popular destinations. These game farms or even rehab centers are, are popular destinations. Now I do wanna make some distinctions in here between rehab centers and game farms. So we'll talk about that in just a minute. And I also want to make sure that there's a caveat here that I'm not really going to get deep into the ethics of things like game farms, where we, where animals are raised um, to be photographed or to be enjoyed publicly, um, very similar to like a zoo. However, I do want to make note that Melissa Grew has covered this topic. And if you don't follow Melissa, I'll put some links down there to some of the stories she's done around game farms specifically. So check that out as well. All right. Well, here's my background story. So about a year ago, I'm following a big account on social media, hundreds of thousands of followers. I remember some stories where you're just stacks of prints, this guy's selling. And I'm just like, wow, this is, this guy's pretty amazing. And then I see these viral videos that he's got or viral uh, photographs that are out on the web. And so he's very, very well known. And I start to look through the social media account a little bit more. And I notice these trends that are kind of odd, the same subjects, uh, or the same types of subjects in very similar environments in very similar conditions. So a fox in the snow, maybe a wolf in the snow, a bobcat or a lynx in the snow. Like these are the types of subjects I'm seeing. And I start to think like this seems a little off. So I comment on one of the images. And first I kind of scan through to read the captions and very little is captioned and certainly nothing about the animals being at a zoo or anything like that. So I ask in the comments, uh, hey, are these wild animals or are these captive? My thought is if these are wild animals, this guy's this guy amazing. I mean, to get these looks, to track these, these animals and to put the time in that it takes to get something like a lynx, the, the looks that he was getting at these animals, I, I thought this is really incredible. I go back a couple of days later, no comment, but also blocked from the account. It, it was apparent that anybody who questioned the 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 wild animal aspect of this or the wildlife aspect of this the comment was removed and maybe even blocked so the account was then just filled with positive comments and i thought boy that that feels so disingenuous uh, clearly these were not wild animals anymore especially when i saw the siberian tiger in the snow probably from the same game farm situation it got me thinking about the audience that's consuming this hitting that like button, telling the photographer how wonderful they are and having them just consume it without ever challenging it. And, it. and it made me realize, and I don't use the term ignorant in a bad way, but how ignorant the audiences of wildlife photography can be. They really just don't know. And again, I don't mean that as a, as a slam or a slander against the people that are consuming the content. They literally just don't know that game farms sometimes exist. So this topic of captive life photography now has, has been on my mind. And honestly, it's, it's been a concern for me. Now, what I want to do is switch my layout. On the screen, where is it? Over there? <laughs> I don't know which side I'm on. On the screen, you're going to see some images being scrolled. Now, I want to be very clear. The images you're seeing are from, photograph from photographers who I solicited. Some of them from my Patreon account. So subscribers that I'm working with on editing and some from uh, Instagram that I just put out a story and said, hey, do you have some images I could use? And, and you're going to see names in here um, that you may recognize. Uh, a photographer that comes to mind that I've included here is Jess Finley. 
uh, who I have a lot of respect for, who goes out into the wild and tracks these animals down and spends a lot of time getting the shots right, but done with wild animals in their nat uh, natural habitats, so in their in the native areas that they are, not at not at, at zoos, not at game farms. And I, I wanted to do this to give some recognition to people that do it the right way. By the way, in the comments down below, if you know some some accounts that are doing this type of work, in my opinion, the right way, go ahead and put the accounts down there because I, I'd love to give them some recognition. Now, back to this whole concept of game farms and zoos. I want to make a, a couple of points here. Photographing an animal at the zoo or a rehab center, in my opinion, there's nothing wrong with it, especially when it's disclosed. I think it's actually a, a tremendous service to some rehab centers to photograph those animals, do it beautifully, and maybe draw some attention. It's actually conservation work in a lot of ways. So yeah, absolutely admirable. I know some fine art photographers who will go to the zoo and photograph animals, portraits generally, and then uh, edit these into beautiful fine artworks. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. The, the, the issue that I always had with this is when people try to pass it off. And after I put this out on Instagram a couple of weeks ago, I had story after story after story about, hey, I know somebody who went and photographed at a game farm and then tried to sell it as in the wild. Specifically, I asked this person, where did you take that? And they lied about it. Um, people that took rehab or zoo animals and then captioned them in the wild. And that's really the, the problem that I think we have out there is people, one, are shooting these captive animals and not disclosing it at all. And, uh, and, and two, actually going to the point where they're just lying about it. I think not everybody is going to have access to wildlife. Not everybody is going to have an opportunity to go out into the wild and photograph a lynx. There are some people who may have limited access. And certainly, I would understand somebody wanting to see and photograph a bobcat or a lynx or a wolf. And maybe the only way they can do that is in a controlled environment. Not a problem. When you, when you disclose it as such, I think it's, I got no problem with it. But we are fooling the audiences into thinking that these things are accurate. And I actually think it takes away a little bit from those people that are out there working really, really hard, like the images I'm showing that are working really, really hard to do it in these wild settings. So a couple things. One, hopefully this, this video educates a few people. I think I'm probably reaching an audience that already knows about it. So going forward, you know, can we put a little bit of pressure on people to be more honest? And do you think that that is the right thing to do? If you disagree with me, if you think a photographer has every right to keep everything private, including shooting captive animals, put it down in the comments. My challenge back is, do, can you call yourself a wildlife photographer when you are shooting captive animals? To me, that's a pet photographer, but that's my challenge. And if you don't agree with me, feel free to throw it in the comments. I, I'm always open to, to two sides of a debate. The, the other thing I do want to mention again, going back to the ethics of it, I haven't dealt with that in this video, but go down at the bottom and check out those links for Melissa Gru. She's got some game farm pieces in there that I think you would find interesting if you haven't seen that already. And it may change your perspective on this a little bit as well. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. So my opinions on this are probably pretty straightforward. I think if we are calling ourselves wildlife photographers, we probably have an obligation to shoot wild animals or at least disclose when we're not. So I think that's the important distinction we make. Again, I have fine art photographer friends who don't claim to be wildlife photographers and they will shoot captive subjects artistically and try to create beautiful prints out of them. But for those of us that consider ourselves wildlife photographers, um, I would put a challenge out there around what we're photographing. I think also we can educate audiences a little bit and consumers think twice before you hit the like button. What am I, what am I liking? What am I commenting on? And can I, and is it appropriate to challenge it a little bit? And then for those people that are shooting those captive subjects, are you disclosing it? And is it the right thing to do? Again, if you don't agree with me, put it down in the comments. We'd love to hear it. If you agree, love to hear that too. Check out the links that I put in there. I think you're going to find those links on game farms. Very, very eye-opening and very, very interesting. So check those out as well. Hope you enjoyed the video. As always, I do appreciate your ongoing support. And I hope we can continue to find inspiration in wildlife 
not captive life together. 